Hi, friend. <laughs> How are you? Sleepy. How was your day? It was good. Hi, everybody. That is weird. We look very yellow, and there's. I'm not going to do anything about it. That's just the world we're living in now. That's the end of our first day in New York, our first full day. Because yeah. we flew in yesterday and just kind of pittered around. Um, but today we had plans and we started, well, our first plan was to get to the Dallas Aquarium, but on our way. Dallas Aquarium. <laughs> we flew back to Dallas to go to the aquarium. It's been a very long day. <laughs> our first plan was to go to the New York Aquarium, which is one of the, it is the oldest operating aquarium in the country. But on the way, we stumbled into a park. We did, I almost forgot about that. Yeah, Bryant Park absolutely beautiful it's right behind the main new york public library building and i'm losing my voice because i had a pretty long day um there's a lot of really cute like bakery breakfast places there um and when we were there somebody was like practicing for some kind of dance performance on a stage or something that was after the yoga class was that yoga or they warming up for the i think it was at the end i think we saw the end of a yoga class and then a dance trio came into practice no idea yeah um so then we went to the new york aquarium because we got back from dallas again uh and it was really interesting one of the things they focused on a lot in the first exhibit was how they are breeding uh endangered fish they're breeding fish that are extinct in the wild so they're doing a lot of conservation work which makes me feel good about going to an aquarium uh you don't really get that when you go to a zoo zoos are I, Personally, I find zoos to be a little bit of a sad experience because the animals are in the. But a lot of them are. Fish don't know. The San Diego Zoo is great. I'm just dying in there. Okay, anyway. Um, fish don't know. Uh, and then there was a sea lion exhibit. We got there just in time for the sea lion show, which was cute. He was very well trained, and I wondered why we weren't training sea lions. We could have gone that way with our life, and instead, here we are. And then we went on a shopping tour. Uh, we tried to stop at the Brooklyn Superhero Supply Company. This is, uh, yeah, so Jeff plans trips badly. Um, we needed advanced tickets for the New York Aquarium and did not have any, which ended up being fine. Yeah. Um, but then the Brooklyn Supply Club, Brooklyn Superhero Supply Company was closed today. So because they're doing them. summer camp, uh, teaching kids creative writing, essentially. That's very cute. I'm so, sure it would have been cute. Yeah, I'm sure it would have been great, but we did not get to go inside and we did not get to do that uh, because poor planning on my so part. So we skipped that. We went to 8-Bit Up. Yeah, 8-Bit Up video games, which was just a hole in the wall. But once you got in, it was the basement every kid dreams about coming across. It was just... Not, not this kid, but... It was from Atari to PlayStation 5. There was a guy in the back who was physically taking apart a Nintendo 64 console to repair it. Uh, they had arcade cabinets. It was a really cool basement. It was um, dingy. It was dingy. It was a hole in the ground, but it was pretty great, I think. Uh, we stopped and got some Szechuan. Yeah, it's fine. I, I always like Chinese. I was, I was happy with it. They put cinnamon in the egg roll, which I was not expecting, but did a lot. Where did we go after 8-Bit? Uh, after 8-Bit, we hit, oh, I'm gonna mess Toy up. Tokyo? Yes, Toy Tokyo, which was just an odd little shop, supposedly. Apparently bobbleheads are really big in New York City. The Funko Pops, yeah. Is that what they're on? Funko Pops everywhere. Yeah. Uh, all, all kinds of Funko all Pops. For everything yeah. you could think of, everything. They had one for, for PB from Mass Effect Andromeda. Yeah. I think Princess hasn't been exposed to a lot of Funko Pops, and so this this was eye opening for her. It was just like I, I don't get it, I don't get it, I don't get it. Yeah, there was a lot of Japanese stuff. Uh, then we hit one other store before we did the the two that. What store was that? Toy Tokyo. It really stood out, obviously. Yeah, no kidding. Video games. Toy Tokyo. I've got pictures, so you're seeing a picture of whatever it is that we can't even remember now. Um, we found we, we saw a store from a distance called 
Captain, Captain Cookie, Cookie and, and the, the Milkman? Milk <laughs> yeah, that's what Captain Cookie and the Milkman. And I was like, is this a cookies and milk store? Because if it is, I have to go to it. And it was. <laughs> it was. And it was good. It was, it was okay. I, I haven't eaten. I've got, I got two cookies from there. They gave me actually an extra cookie. I got a scoop of ice cream and a cookie and they gave me an extra scoop. Because it was our first time. I don't know how they knew. Um, they just had those faces. Um, it was, it was, this was the face was of fine. an inexperienced cookie eater. I expect more from cookies. Um, the chips were gooey. I like it when the chips are gooey. That's a good sign. And then we went to my favorite place that we went today. The Strand. Bookstore. A used bookstore. 18 used? miles of books. Yes. They were all used? Yes. No. Yes. Really? That's why there was but a whole kiosk. they had so many new releases. And like... Okay, so it might not all be used, but a significant portion of it was used. Which is why they had uh, they had a big kiosk in the first floor because there were four floors to this place. Three. There was a basement we didn't go in. There was a basement. Why and there was a the third basement? floor that we didn't go to. Why didn't we go in the basement? Um, there what was, was in the basement. Uh, religion, oh. philosophy, oh. these sorts of things. So yeah, it was three stories. The third story is. Uh, was reading rooms in a rare book collection. We didn't go up there, but the second floor was comics and kid books and Princess found a book on the second floor in the photography section. Yeah. And you found a disappointing section. Oh, yeah. They had a very small erotica section and I questioned their choices of what they put in there because it was um, all of the Fifty Shades of Grey books, which are fine but they're not really erotica you know what i'm saying and um and then Anne rice books and then some random shit i'd never heard of and i was like i'm not sure what their criteria is because it was right next to the romance section i'm not sure what their criteria is for putting something in erotica versus romance but i expected more that was my only disappointment other than that um i loved everything about this store I picked up a couple of old school pulp sci-fi and fantasy books because those are always fun. Out of print, Harlan Ellison, um, The Last Unicorn, and something else I can't even remember. It just looked good. It was very tactilely appealing. Oh no, I wanted to live there. Like, could have, would have been happy just like going there every day reading books. The sign outside says 18 miles of books, and I do believe if you put all the books in there end to end, it would be 18 miles. The shelves are so high that you have to get a ladder, not a step stool, a ladder to get to the top shelf. Uh, and even with that, yeah. I don't know that you would have made it. That was weird too, because the erotica section was on the top three shelves, which which you could not reach, which I thought was very strange because they had a section of an erotic photography that was just a normal shelf and just like not hidden anywhere, not difficult to reach. And so it just seemed like an interesting choice to me. After that, we went next door to Forbidden Planet. Uh, which is a big comic book, nerd paraphernalia. They had the most beautiful selection of garbage movies I have ever seen. I wanted to live there in the Blu-ray section. I, I had never heard of any of those movies. I'd only heard of like a fourth of them, and that's saying a lot. I have watched a lot of garbage, and I was not familiar with a good chunk of it. Uh, I did find a trauma movie I'd been looking for for 20 bucks, that I had never, I couldn't find anywhere for less than 60. So uh, I was happy about that. Um, and then we came back to the hotel room to rest because our legs and our feet and our bodies were broken. <laughs> it was a lot of walking and we were dead. We died. I so <laughs> we came back to the hotel room for a little bit and watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine and went, we were just in Brooklyn. Um, and then my friend Cody from high school, actually we were friends in like elementary school, but. Uh, I haven't seen him in 20 years. He lives in New York. He met up with us. He took us to a uh, uh, run-of-the-mill diner because he said you have to have a diner experience in New York. And then we went to an escape room. Over to our escape room expert. Oh, it was called Exit Escape Room. Exit Escape from NYC. Exit something. Escape Room exit, NYC. Exit something. Exit Escape something. Anyway. Um, it was a speeding train, or escaping a speeding train. So this is the only the second escape room that Jeff has done, and it was the very first one that Jeff's friend Cody had done. And Jeff, Cody was 
was a little bit nervous. He was very nervous. And as the woman was describing the scenario, his eyes just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And he was just like, what, what, what is happening? What have I signed up for? I'm going to be trapped in here. It was, a, it was actually, a, I thought it was a pretty cute room. It was um, perfect for three people, like literally perfect. Mm -hmm. um, so many of the puzzles were like, you needed exactly three people to do this and ta-da. Um, it, it was a really clean room. It, um, what I really no, liked no is- No red herrings, everything was used once, which she tells you at the beginning, so I'm not spoiling anything. Yeah. Uh, I, I liked that we finally, we stopped the speeding train and we were like, damn, we crushed it. We did this in less than 30 minutes. We're amazing. Stepped into the next room. Oh, it's a whole separate puzzle room. We are not done. There, <laughs> there like, is hey, more. thank goodness, because I get so disappointed when I get out of a room in under 30 minutes and I'm just like, well, what do I do with the rest of my hour now? Uh, <laughs> uh, it, was, it was actually a lot of fun. If I could guarantee that every escape room would be that experience, I would definitely go to more of them. That yeah, was... and Cody really enjoyed it too, which pleased me. Like his, his joy when he got to put in the final code. Yep. Uh, we all good. worked well together. I think we all contributed at various points. Um, that was, it was just a damn good time. It was my first escape room in, in New York City, so now I can just check that off my, my map of the world. Um, so, and then, yeah, we forgot the one other store we went to. It's, we went to another store? I don't remember going to another store. Anyway, so plans for tomorrow. We must have hated it. Yeah. The only thing we bought anything at was the Strand, and I bought something at Forbidden Planet. Oh, yeah. Um, so plans for tomorrow. We start the day at the Hayden Planetarium. At which we will see Neil deGrasse Tyson, or I will demand my money back. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson is the director of the Hayden Planetarium. That's not even guaranteeing he's in the city. So he could be anywhere in the cosmos. No, he lives there. Uh, but I bought the advanced time-related tickets, as you're supposed to do. We learned our lesson. Mm-hmm. So we're going to do the Hayden Planetarium. We're going to walk in the main branch of the New York Public Library. Jeff doesn't realize this, but there are exhibits in the library. So, so that'll be a fun little walk around. It, it'll, it'll. And, you know, we get to go to Bryant Park again, which pleases me. It was a really cute park. We're gonna go up the Empire State Building because Cody says that's the one thing everybody should do when they get to New York. We completely forgot. That's what we forgot. We're horrible people. What? We saw a memorial. Oh yeah! We, we saw the 9-11 memorial today. Yes, we went to the, we went to Ground that's Zero. Not the, 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 not, no, it's not a shop, but I knew there was something we were forgetting. The 9-11 memorial, um, which was, I, it was a pretty powerful. I mean, just these giant holes in the ground and the pouring water and all the names. And Princess found one that was a woman and her unborn child. That was a bit dark, yeah. I could have, I could have done, honestly, they, they didn't hit me particularly hard. Um, we went up to Liberty Park where they had the Koenig Sphere. That did hit me. That was nice. So apparently that was originally like a symbol of world peace. Um, resulting from world trade or whatever that got damaged during the strike and so like the sphere has been damaged and like they actually um, reclaimed it from the debris or whatever and moved it to what park was that they moved it to battery park no, and then they moved no. it back to liberty park after. Liberty park, yeah and uh and they just they mounted it again and like with all the damage on it and stuff and i was like that's actually more powerful for me and we actually ran into the anne frank tree Yes, it oh, was a yeah. tree cut from a sapling from the tree that she could see from the attic that she wrote about uh, along the lines of uh, as long as there's suffering, I know that there is hope because nature can sustain us and this tree will always be here. Something like that, yeah. Um, Which was kind of sweet. And, and then I, Cody told us that you could see the Statue <laughs> of Liberty from... On the 9-11 more. You cannot. You, no, he lied. There are many buildings. He's a liar. The Statue of Liberty. He's a filthy liar. So we walked all the way down to the end of Manhattan. That was so a good 15, 20 minute Liberty. walk. And the Statue of Liberty was like, we could yep. see it. It was fine. There it is. It looks like it Ta -da. looks. But we saw this interesting memorial instead. Yeah, for, for the merchant mariners. Yeah, people, yeah, people who, lot, thousands of people who gave their lives, I guess, for like yeah. trade or something. It's a statue of three guys, and one of them is reaching to a fourth guy who's drowning in the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was really visceral. I, 
that was more powerful for me than either the Statue of Liberty or the 9-11 memorial. Um, so we did that. Um, tomorrow, we were talking about tomorrow. So Empire English. State Building. Impressive. Then we go to the Hall of Science, which is free on Fridays. Turns out. It was originally part of a World's Fair pavilion. And it's supposed to be very hands-on and interactive. Sounds like a good time. Uh, and then Cody may join us for some part of that. And then at 8 p.m., the reason for the trip, the reason we're all here, the thing we're looking forward to the most. Uh-huh. What is it? Little Shop. <laughs> Little Shop of Horrors off-Broadway. Probably very off-Broadway. We'll see. It's only a little off-Broadway. It's officially off-Broadway. That's the actual yeah. classification. So, you, uh, you know, the big names are on Broadway, and then off-Broadway, I think it used to mean one street over, but now it's more a classification of, uh, like, junior varsity. Did we mention that we could have seen Daniel Craig and Macbeth? Yes, you did mention that, and our friends warned us off of it. Our new friends. I will say, you know what she did say, Beetlejuice was an excellent choice. For somebody who doesn't like musicals, yes. they yeah, she said it's perfect for someone who doesn't like musicals, and that's what we are seeing Saturday. So that's it. We are gonna get some sleep. We are tired. It is it is midnight essentially. Yeah. We got up at eight o'clock. It's now midnight. We go it all day. We've been on the go pretty much that whole time. And we're gonna do it again tomorrow. Yep.